With over 102 million ballots cast before polls officially open today, this election is on track for a historic level of voter turnout. While those are incredible numbers, it also means counting those returns and releasing vote totals will be a challenge. National political analysts that I talked to say you'll need one word while watching election coverage tonight, patience. With a record-breaking surge in early voting, turnout in 2020 could be the highest since 1908, around 65 percent or 150 million voters. We're going to get a lot of the puzzle pieces of election 2020 tonight, but we're not necessarily going to get every single one. And that's because of two things. One, the sheer volume of absentee votes, which takes longer to process and count than in-person votes. And two, not every state is allowed by law to start processing and counting those absentees before Election Day. States like Florida, North Carolina, and here in Ohio have already started processing, while Midwestern battleground states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin have had to wait. We are bracing ourselves for the potential, and again, I stress the word potential, of this being just more than just an all-nighter. This could actually be a week of counting ballots if it is that close in those Midwest states. The delay compounded by the fact many states are also allowing votes to be counted even if they arrive after Election Day, as long as they're postmarked by November 3rd. So the big question everyone wants to know, will we know who the next president will be tonight? Maybe and maybe not. <laughs> it depends on how close the election is. And that could be determined when we see the results of states like Florida, North Carolina, and Ohio, which should have numbers relatively early. I think if any of them flip to Joe Biden tonight, um, they would that would be indicative of him winning. And so states like Florida, I think Ohio is in that category, North Carolina, Georgia, Iowa. You know, those are all states where I think we'll have a decent sense, some states better than others, as to what the results are going to be. But if President Trump holds on to those states, NBC News senior political editor Mark Murray says buckle up for a long night or even longer. The dicey situation and the maybe not is all of a sudden if we see that President Trump wins Florida, if he wins North Carolina, then all of a sudden that to me looks like a 2016 environment that we're going to have to then count the ballots in the Midwest states of Michigan, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin. And that could actually take weeks, if not a whole month. One analyst points to Pennsylvania as the key in all of it. I think the state that uh, is probably likeliest to vote for the winning candidate overall is Pennsylvania. I think if Biden wins Pennsylvania, he's probably still going to be OK. I think if Trump wins Pennsylvania, he, he very well could win another term. So that, if I can pick one state that's the most important is Pennsylvania. And unfortunately, if I had to pick one state where the vote counting might be uh, as confusing and delayed as possible, it unfortunately might also be Pennsylvania. Then there's Texas, which could also be a wild card, a traditionally red state. If it somehow goes blue, analysts say the race is over. And late this afternoon, North Carolina now says it will be about an hour delayed in their results because of polling locations opening a little bit late. Another important note here, beware of what's called the blue and red mirage. Numbers skewed as some states release absentee numbers first, others are going to release in-person voting first. Just because your candidate is up or down early does not mean that that will be the outcome. Make sure you pack your patience when watching the results.